Oh, welcome to our Magic Squares project. We are going to um, build a Magic Square in Java. Um, before we get started, though, I'm go let's go over, review what Magic Squares actually are. You can see an example of a Magic Square here um, by Albrecht Durer, who lived in um, the basically the Renaissance time, and Magic Square have been around for over 4,000 years. They were believed to have originated in Persia. They originally were um, being carved on stone or metal in temples um, as talismans to ward off diseases and ensure the longevity of people. So some people, even wealthier people, had them in their houses or on the doors. A magic square is a square of any size, uh, However, the length and the height of the square has to be the same. So here you see a 3 by 3 square. And you can see that this is basically a 2D uh, grid in Java, or 2D array in Java. And as we add across 2, 7, and 6, the number is 15. As we add down 6, 1, and 8, the number is 15. Or if we add in a diagonal 2, 5, and 8 is also 15. So the numbers have to be placed in an order where each side equals a magic, what we call a magic number, that is 15. And notice that the numbers are sequential, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, so you're not allowed to skip any numbers. It's kind of like having a straight in poker. Um, so each square has a magic constant, and this is the mathematical formula for representing the magic constant where n is the number of sides. So if we have a 3 by 3 square, we take 3 and, cu and cube it. So 3 times 3, I'm sorry, square it. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, times 3, which is 30, and then we divide by 2, which is 15, and that was our magic square. If we had a magic square of 4, it would be 4 squared times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, times 4 is 36, divided by 2 would be 18. So you can see here, um, these are the possible numbers that you can have in a magic square. If you have uh, a magic square of 1, you can only have one number or one possible combination. 2 is not possible to make a magic square because you remember we needed one of the requirements was that if it was too long or too wide, it had to be too high. So there's no way to make a 2 by 2 magic square. Um, let me rephrase that. You could have a 2 by 2, but there's no possible magic square number that you could have. So um, you can try it out for yourself. You, 3 is the magic number is 15. And then um, 4, 5, and 6, I would let my day students figure out what the magic square was themselves. Um, but for you, I'm just going to go ahead and let you know that 4 is 34, 5 is 65, 6 is 11, and as you go up, the magic number increases. So here we have... Um, a figure 3 by 3, uh, which we saw before, which the magic number is 15. Now here's a very ancient magic square that instead of numbers is made out of dots. And I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to figure out what that, what the pattern actually is. So you can, one of the things you can see from this square is that there are dots with holes and dots that are filled in. And if you look at the dots that are have holes, notice that this is 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. So all the ones with holes are odd numbers, and all the ones with, with colored in are even, 2, 4, 6, and, and 8. And that these numbers, the number of dots right here, happen to match the pattern that we fill in a 3 by 3 magic square with Arabic numerals. However, the Chinese did it with dots. So you can see here in the, this square that 
two, six, four, and eight are um, in the corners, and one, all the odd numbers are in make a cross. Um, how many different patterns can you fill? Well, for a one by one, there's one only one way to fill it. Just put the number one in it. If there's three, three by three, remember we said two by two, no magic square exists. And for three by three, there's only one way to fill it. For four by four, there's 880 ways to fill it. For a five, and for a six, you can see that the number grows exponentially. And this is why chess has more possible combinations than atoms in the universe, is because a chessboard is eight by eight um, squares. So there's more, there's an infinite number of possibilities in a chessboard. And that's why chess is such a difficult game to play. Um, you can see here that this is a 4x4 four four magic square. It's one of the originals um, in, from the Arabic world and one of the first even sets of magic squares. Um, this is another famous magic square. You can see it's in here in the painting of Albrecht Dürer called Melancholia I. And this magic square has special con significance um, and was highlighted in the modern book Dan Dance Brown, The Lost Symbol. Um, the reason that, I'll go ahead and blow this up a little bit. The reason that this has special significance is that there are a lot of number of patterns in this magic square. First of all, can you tell what the magic constant is? I'll give you a minute to figure it out. All right, so hopefully you've taken a couple of stop the video and taken a couple minutes to look at this magic square and figure out the constant which happens to be 34 if you go across 16 3 2 and 13 are 34 also 13 8 12 and 1 are 34 and 16 10 7 and 1 are 34 but what's also interesting about this magic square is that if you look at the four if you look at the quads in the upper left upper right bottom left and bottom right, each of these quads actually equals 34, 16, 3, 5, and 10, or 2, 13, 11, and 8. And another way to get 34 is if you do the four corners, 16, 13, 1, and 4 also equal 34. So this was a special magic square, and people in, in the Middle Ages already thought that magic squares had mysticism and magic surrounding them, but when they saw this one by Albert Durer, they um, thought he was you know, a demon and part of an occult because there's no way a normal human being could come up with such a thing, such a magic square. Another couple common things about this magic square is that the two middle numbers at the bottom, 15 and 14, happen to be the date that he published this magic square, and also the one and the four correspond to um, an A and a D, which happens to be the numbers of his initials. A is one and D is four in the English alphabet. And of course, if you want to read about uh, a story surrounding the, the, this lost symbol, you can read Dan Brown's book, The Lost Symbol. Okay, so there are two basic types of magic squares. In this project, we're going to only deal with the odd ones, but there are also what we call doubly even, which means that the number of s columns or, or rows is divisible by four, and singly even, which means that um, they are not divisible by four. So uh, four, a four by four or an eight by eight would be doubly even, where a six by six would only be singly even. And notice that the odds, one, three, five, seven, nine, etc., are the easiest to populate. Then come the doubly even magic squares. And then finally, the singly even magic squares, which are populated by something called the Lux method, which you can find the rules for online, in, like in Wikipedia. 
All right, so now we're going to talk about programming a magic square. So we're going to just do a simple three by three. And here is the steps for programming a magic square. Step one is you're going to place one in the top middle column. If we were talking about a 2D array in Java, this would be at row zero and column one. Okay. Then the next number happens to be down in the bottom corner, which is um, column two and row two. And then, because we have a three by three, and computers start counting at zero. So over here then we add the three in the 2D in column zero and row one. Then we go down to four, we go up to five, come down here and then go up to six, and then down to seven, and then we go over to eight, and then finally we go to nine. Now there is a pattern for filling this, and I'm going to stop the video and, or you can stop the video and take a couple minutes to see if you can figure out what the pattern is for filling out a, a simple 3x3 three three magic square. This will happen to be the same pattern for all magic squares, so once you figure it out, you can populate any odd numbered magic square. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so maybe you figured out the pattern and maybe you not, but let's go over it. So the way this fills is we're going to start in the top middle column, which happens to be at row 0, column 1. We have to remember that we're, when working with 2D arrays in Java, Java is row dominated, so we start with the row and then work with the column. So actually what the pattern is here is that we're going to go up and over, but notice we're outside of the array. These labels on tops of the arrays don't count. So since we're outside of the array, when we're outside we wrap around, so we wrap to 2. So now we have 1, 2. Now we need to um, go up and over again, but we're outside of the array, so we wrap around to this square on the left hand side, and so we get 3. And then, so now we're in this square. So now the rule is we want to go up and over, but it's full, so the rule is we go back to where we started and then go down a square. Now we can go up and over, in this case add 5 to the middle of the array. We want to go up and over, it's empty, so we can come down here and see we can add 6 to the array. Now we go up and over again, we're actually um, out, we wrap around, since we went up and over, we wrap around um, both ways, so we're back down here at the bottom of the square, but um, it's already filled, so when something's filled, we go back to where we are and go down one, so there's seven being filled. Again, we want to go up and over, we're outside of the array, so we wrap around and it's empty, so we fill it with eight. Again, we want to go up and over, it, we're outside of the array, so we wrap around, and now we're back at nine. And so it's this algorithm that we're going to use to fill the magic square. So if I were you, I would write this algorithm down step by step so that you can then turn the steps into Java code. And I'm going to stop the video for a second and give you a chance to do that. Alright, so hopefully you came up with an algorithm that you can follow. Here's the algorithm that I'm going to use to program my magic squares. I'm going to start in the middle top cell of the magic square and add the first number. I'm going to then move up and to the right to get to the next cell. If I'm out of bounds, I wrap around to the bottom. And if you encounter a filled cell, you move down one row instead of up and to the right. So those um, four rules are all the steps I need to fill uh, or create my magic square. And um, so let's get started.